Hi everybody. Uh, so today I want to talk about a book that I just finished and that is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. And I just have to say that I love this book. Got to pet your cover because it's so good. And it's so velvety. It's like <laughs> the best book ever. And I have to say that out of the past year and a half, this is the best book that I have read by far. 100%. I just can't even put into words how much I love it. It is absolutely awesome. Superb even. Heartbreaking. So suspenseful. It's ridiculous. And action packed. So this book follows an alien invasion on Earth. And I got this book from a good friend of mine and she sent it to me last month and I had not heard about it anything. I'd seen things online but I didn't even know what the blurb was about the book. So I went into this completely blind, not knowing what was going on, without any expectations. And if you go into this book without any expectations, you're going to be blown away. Uh, it was so good. It's about an alien invasion on Earth, and I'm just going to read a part of it for you real fast. This is the prologue of the book, and it goes, There will be no awakening. The sleeping woman will feel nothing the next morning, only a vague sense of unease and the unshakable feeling that someone is watching her. Her anxiety will fade in less than a day and will soon be forgotten. The memory of the dream will linger a little longer. In her dream, a large owl perches outside the window, staring at her through the glass with huge white-rimmed eyes. She will not awaken, neither will her husband beside her. The shadow falling over them will not disturb their sleep, and what the shadow has come for, the baby within the sleeping woman, will feel nothing. The intrusion breaks no skin, violates not a single cell of her or her baby's body. It is over in less than a minute, the shadow withdraws. Now it is only the man, the woman, the baby inside her, and the intruder inside the baby sleeping. The woman and man will awaken in the morning, the baby a few months later when he is born. The intruder inside him will sleep on and not wake for several years when the unease of the child's mother and the memory of that dream have long since faded. So that kind of gives you an idea of how this alien invasion really takes place. It creeped me out when I read the beginning of this book because I have a weird thing about children and pregnancy and mothers like the scene in Game of <laughs> if you've watched Game of Thrones and there's like a scene in season two with Melisandre giving birth and I had nightmares about giving birth to my son after that because I was super pregnant so I'm like really wary of anything like that and I <sighs> anyways <laughs> back to the book so our book has four narrators, which is awesome. So you get four different points of view of what's going on. And this is the first book that I have ever read that has that many narrators. Usually dual narration is usually the, the most that I've actually encountered. So this was amazing. And each uh, person that narrates, they have like their own little section. So there's no, there's no confusing anything that happens with the, these people. So... Our main narrator is Cassie. She is my favorite narrator. She is a teenage girl that is surviving this alien invasion. And she goes over the first four waves and talks about the fifth wave as it's happening and as she finds out. So you get kind of an idea of what happens uh, with the first four waves. So the first wave is lights out. Basically, the aliens bring down a giant EMP, shut everything. Nothing works. Cars don't run, planes don't fly. Nothing works. So the that basically shuts down humanity as we know it. Because could you imagine not having any sort of electricity at all? We don't know what it's like to not have electricity. Maybe our great grandparents do, but we don't know what it's like to not constantly have a cell phone, TV, lights, running water. We don't know what it's like not to have any of that. So the second wave is a t giant tsunami that like goes over the entire world and it covers every island and every seaboard. So it centralizes the leftover population. So basically, if I was a part of this, I would be dead right now because I live in Washington and it's underwater. So, and if you live in the UK, Japan, any islands, if you live like in Australia, anything like that, underwater, see ya, bye, bye bye, you're gone, you're dead. And so that devastates a lot of the population. And the third wave is a disease. And if you, when you read this book and you read about the disease, it will make you nauseous. It's absolutely disgusting. And I just can't, oh man, so gross. And the fourth wave are silencers. And that is the aliens taking on human form 
and take, taking out the rest of the population that basically survived the plague, which kills 97% of the population. So 3% of the population is left, and so these aliens are trying to kill them off. So, in the fifth wave is talked about, that's what this book is about, the fifth wave. So, if you want to know what the fifth wave is, I just pick this up and read it. Okay, so our second narrator in this story is Zombie, and he's a soldier. So you get kind of his point of view of what's going on. And then our third narrator is Sammy, who is Cassie's younger brother. He's five years old. So he doesn't narrate a lot of the book, just like a couple chapters. And then our fourth narrator is a silencer. So you get kind of his point of view of where he's coming from and why he's doing what he's doing. So it is so cool the way that he wrote this. And a part of my language, but this book is a complete mindfuck. And I am still so confused and still am reeling about what I read. It, I just, I can't, I just can't. I can barely talk about it. I, I really just can't. So the way that Rick Yancey writes this book, it's amazing because he makes you so confused on who you can trust and he does a really great job about writing these characters in a way that it makes you want to like them and makes you want to believe that they're doing the best thing and everything and he just pulls that rug out from underneath you constantly so the entire time you're reading this book you just don't know you don't know who's who's the good guy who's the bad guy and I loved that I loved that feeling and I have to admit, I had to put this book down constantly and take laps <laughs> because I just, I was so caught up and it's so much anxiety for these characters and what's going on. And there's so much action. There's hardly any um, parts of this book that there is not a lot going on. So you never get bored and you never, even though it's 500 pages, <laughs> it's like you never at any time go, okay, well, he could have cut this out. It's like not important because everything in this book is so well thought out and everything comes full circle at the end and even though it's not a resolution for the story completely you do still feel satisfied with the ending and I can't wait for the other two books to come out I just I'm waiting for August to roll around so I can go pick up the next book The Infinite Sea oh my gosh I just cannot wait so um please add me below so we can talk about these books and leaving comments so we can just discuss. I, I want to talk about this book with someone, so please. Oh my gosh. Okay, so everyone enjoy the rest of your weekend, and it's Game of Thrones Day, so if you're ready for Game of Thrones tonight, put your hands in the air, because I am ready for some Khaleesi action. But everybody have a good Sunday.